going to do here is set double or dual analog outputs on a Siemens Model 353 loop controller. Presently, this is set up for its factory configured option 101, which shows a single loop control, very basic. We want to add a second analog output block in this function block program so that we will have two active analog outputs, both of them 4 to 20 milliamps, both of them driving the same signals to two different valves, which we will then split range. Zero. So what we're going to do here is uh, first investigate how this is set up in the original configuration. So I'm going to descend into the menu structure and take a look at the parameters for analog output number one. Here we go. Enter configuration. I'm going to step down twice. I'm going to go over here until I see edit function block. I'm going to step down there. And now it's going to show me all the different function blocks that are in this program. So I'm going to see an alphabetical order all these function blocks, and one of them is analog out one. If I step down into that, I can see all the different parameters. And one here is input S, which is, as you can see is the signal line going to that block. Input S. So I step down into that. It says input S comes from analog, sorry, auto manual block output 01. That input comes from auto manual block output 01. So this is how you tie the blocks together. You don't draw lines. We don't have the software to do that. But you can step in here and tell each block where it gets its input from. So in this case, analog output block number one gets its input signal from the output of auto manual block dot 01. Make sense? All right, so what I'm going to do now is step up, step up, step up again. I don't want to edit function blocks. I want to add a function block. Step down. Now it's all the possible function blocks that aren't being used. And one of those is analog output number two right there. I want to store. So now I've just added another function block to my program. However, that function block is just floating around in here. It's not connected to anything. We need to connect it. So stepping up, going to edit. Actually, sorry, let's go out of this entirely. Hit a wrong button. Let's do the configuration again. Step down, step down. Again, edit function block. We can take a look at our original analog output block right here. It's got a range pointer. Comes from PID.OR. It has an input S, which comes from auto manual block 01. And then it's got some other parameters. We're not using D. We're not using any of the others, so there's basically very few parameters. I'm going to step up out of here. Now I'm going to select analog output 2. Notice how that now shows up as one of our options. If I take a look at all the available blocks in this function program, I see that analog output 1 and 2 are both there. It didn't used to be there, but I've now added it. So analog output 2, I step down into that. I go into range pointer. I've got to tell it where to get it, its range pointer from. Well, I can select all the available range pointers and the one that the other analog output block had was PID.OR, so I'm going to say, I want that one. I'll store. Then I step up. The next parameter in A out 2 is its input S. It wants to know where do I get my signal from. Step down to that. Once again, it's unconfigured. And what do I want to choose here? Auto manual dot 01, same as the other analog output block. And I store that. Now I get out of the thing entirely. And presto, I now have a loop controller with two active analog outputs, A out 1 and A out 2. Whatever I set the output to here in manual mode, I will have the same number of milliamps coming out of both of those outputs. Does anyone have a meter handy? So grab a meter. I'm going to set this to 75%. So 75%, how many milliamps should that be? 16, exactly, exactly. Okay. Are your wires hooked up to anything right now on the two analog outputs? Yes. They are. OK, going to two valves already? Mm -hmm. All right. Give me a screwdriver. We'll measure current. We'll just that. Ready to go. Yeah. Do, 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 do. Oh. Right here. So, I have a plethora of screwdrivers here. I'm going to loosen off that. 
pull that wire out. And now if I hook my meter in series, I should be able to measure the current that's being driven to that wire. Now as a general rule, I never try to take a measurement on a loose screw. So I'm going to take that screw, tighten it all the way back down again, put the meter there, and I'm getting 16 milliamps. That's 16 milliamps, very good. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, put the wire back in, just or screw that out, dress up the strands and the wires a little bit so it'll fit in nicely, put it back in, and then what we're going to do is disconnect the other current loop, connect our meter in series with that, and make sure it's 16 milliamps as well. So here's analog output number two, which is already connected for us. I'm going to loosen that off. I shouldn't say it was already connected. Sullivan connected it for us. Tighten that screw down. Because remember, I don't want to measure on a loose screw terminal. Put my meter in series, and I should get 16 milliamps, and I do. So I'm getting the same signal on both outputs. 16 milliamps on A out 2, 16 on A out 1. So that is provisionally confirming that this thing's working the way it should. A full test would be to make sure we're getting a full 4 to 20 milliamp range on both out outputs, but I'm pretty comfortable it's doing what it should here. If I had messed something up in the configuration, we shouldn't even do this much. So we now have two active analog outputs on our one controller, all ready to drive two valves split range.